Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, what price a knighthood? Ask Sir Philip Green, and he might say £363 million. Pounds. That is the amount that the former owner of BHS today agreed to pay into the company's pension scheme. The firm went bust with a massive hole in its fund. In the previous years, the businessman had benefited from hundreds of millions of pounds in dividends from the company. Well, today's settlement brings to an end months of negotiations with the pensions regulator. But will it bring to an end calls for Sir Philip Green to be stripped of his knighthood? Our business editor, Siobhan Kennedy, reports. The collapse of BHS wasn't just the loss of 11,000 jobs and the disappearance of a former darling of the high street. It also placed in jeopardy the future of all its workers' pensions and triggered one of the biggest corporate scandals in recent years. At the centre of it all, this man, Sir Philip Green. The demise of BHS was also an embarrassment for the political class here at Westminster, who for years on both sides of the House had held up Sir Philip Green as the model British businessman. But his reputation was shattered by his apparent reluctance to plug the mammoth BHS pension gap and the sense that he had to be dragged kicking and screaming to today's final settlement. Sir Philip has now agreed to pay £363 million of his own money to plug the gap. Cash that means BHS staff will now get the pension they were originally promised, though a compromise between Sir Philip and the regulator means the payout over the years won't go up as fast. The former BHS boss apologised for what he called a sorry chapter, <coughs> one that saw him grilled by MPs and pilloried by the press. Welcome. The last four weeks... <coughs> Uh, I could be a murderer, the way they're writing about me. And even led to calls for him to be stripped of his knighthood. Employers all over Britain pay their pension dues on time and don't expect honours or credit for it. So I don't think Philip Green deserves to be thanked for paying the money that he should, probably should have been paying from day one. He's put his workers through a miserable time and it's finally right that the money's been paid. The crisis began when Sir Philip sold BHS to Dominic Chappelle, a man with no retail experience, in 2015 for just one pound. A year later, it collapsed. But over the years, Sir Philip had paid himself millions of pounds in dividends from BHS, and the regulator determined that he should be responsible for the workers' pensions. Just looking back, um, do you wish that you had perhaps acted sooner on this whole issue and that it hadn't blown up into the sort of political fraught you know argument that it did we um launched our uh, investigation into possible avoidance in this situation um, as soon as we heard about uh, the sale of, of bhs it's really important that we are um, robust in these situations, that we are prepared to use our avoidance powers if that is appropriate to do so, and to progress in investigations quickly uh, as we did in this case. So the case against Sir Philip Green is closed. £363 million of his money is tonight sitting with the regulator and workers can breathe a sigh of relief. But the same cannot be said for Dominic Chappelle, the man at the helm when BHS actually went down. The case against him remains open. Siobhan Kennedy, our business editor. Well, Sir Philip Green said that his voluntary contribution to up to £363 million will enable the trustees of the BHS pension schemes to achieve a significantly better outcome, he says, than the schemes entering the Pension Protection Fund, which, he said, was the goal from the outset. Well, joining me now is Labour MP Frank Field, who chairs the Work and Pension Select Committee and led the campaign to get Philip Green to plug that gap in the pension scheme. Welcome to the program, Frank Field. Are you satisfied now? I'm satisfied in the sense this is what the pension regulator believes she can get. It's not as good as I think the pensioners deserve because although they will be getting the pension uh, at a level that they thought of when they start to draw their pension, the pension will be increased at a lower rate of inflation than it would otherwise be. But this is I think a good day, if one can view anything of this saga as, as a good day, but it's not the end of the story. There's a whole bevy of reports still to come 
which look at Sir Philip Green's behaviour in pulling this great company down. Okay. So while there's some end, I hope, for the pensioners, they feel that, it's not the end for Sir Philip Green. But that was the big issue, wasn't it? The big issue was the, the hole in the pensions fund. He has plugged that now. To be fair to him, the pensions regulator recommended £350 million. He's gone beyond that with 363 And essentially, the pensions will get what they thought they were going to get at the beginning of this whole story, be, before the company went belly up. That is, you know, it's time to bury the hatchet, isn't it, really? I, well, I've, I've said how, what, what a good... Um day it is for pensioners. I hope they believe that. We'll see in the following days whether they do or whether I'm being too optimistic on that. I'm puzzled why Sir Philip couldn't do this at the very beginning. Why did he drag and let the pensioners through this mire that he has done? As, as well, why has he done it to himself and his family? Why has he uh, allowed their names to be drugged, uh, dragged through the muck as he has done? And as I say, there are other important questions that arise from this which are different to do with the pensions. And I'm sorry, in a sense, you feel it's personalised. Um, well, I'm, you made I, it quite I, personal I, in the House of Commons. I mean, you, you really laid into him, didn't you, in quite a, in quite a vociferous way. Well, I thought, <laughs> I always think I'm so gentle, so it's rather good that I didn't take against him. Well, didn't, you are now. It's rather good that I didn't take against him, isn't it? But I do say that they, this is an important milestone but we've got the serious fraud office investigating. We've got the Inland Revenue investigating. Mm -hmm. We've got two reports coming in to the biz department about the running okay. of this company. So there, there so are four other so just milestones briefly, to go. What about the knighthood? Should he keep the knighthood? The yes House or no? Com the, the House of Commons decided unanimously that he should lose it. The person that's going to kick off whether he does or not is the Prime Minister, and she's okay. very wisely waiting for those other four reports before she gives a steer to the committee, which will take it away or okay. leave it And with finally, him. how do we prevent this from happening again, most importantly? Two things. One is that we'll be looking at changes of uh, the Select Committee, Pension Select Committee on the Pensions Law, but also we're doing joint work with the Biz Select Committee mm. on how we reform private companies who okay. clearly are more important than many public companies. All right, Frank Field, thank you very much indeed.